So let's talk about class invariance, right? So as, as, a, a, you know, as the example, trivial example that we looked at earlier, right? We were looking at even numbers, even counters. Uh, the invariance was that this particular value, right, uh, the, of the counter was that it always had to be even, okay? Uh, and, uh, and then once we have identified the invariance, we have to make sure that all operations, right, uh, make sure that the invariance is never uh, violated. So the first step of any design of deciding of whatever it is that you're building is identifying what the invariances are right? and then making sure that you evaluate every single operation, every single method, every single algorithm right? not to break that invariance. Right? We are, you know, we are uh, software engineers, right? we are information scientists, right? we are the guarantors of the information. Uh, presumably inf information uh, stored in whatever hard drive whatnot represents some true phenomena in the real world. And we want to make sure that uh, whatever we, however we model that world is always as true and representative of, of reality, right? If, if it's not, then, you know, the, our, the value of the data the, uh, you know, loses its value, right? It's, it's meaningless. There's no, there's no need for it, right? Uh, so let's look, talk about class invariance. Uh, so a class invariance is some, some logical statement, right? There's, it's some logical statement that at any one particular time and moment, Right, uh, needs to be true. Right, so you have to first say, well, at this particular instance in time, is this true? Is this logical expression true? Right, I'm not saying forever or tomorrow or whatnot. You know, any particular moment in time, is this true? Uh, and then, and then, uh, once uh, once we identify the the logical statement, we have to make sure that any constructors, methods, or any operation, any algorithm that affect the, um, all the, any variable, any state uh, uh, that uh, it ensures that this logical uh, statement stays true. All right? So the first step is identifying what these, what these uh, invariances are. Right? And by class, we mean you know, for a given class, for a given class, right, identify what needs to be true about that class. Right? And, then, and then identify all the constructors and methods to, to, um, uh, to ensure and, and guarantee that that invariance is, is, uh, is true, right? So a logical statement uh, is some claim, right? some, some, uh, some expression uh, that, that you are claiming to either be true or false. Right? Uh, and, and we only care about any particular instant state, meaning look at, the con look at a particular instance of a class, look at all the variables, that, 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 that collection of variables make up the state of the object, yes? Right? And, and considering the current state of your object, is it breaking that logical statement? Right? Is it true or false right, of, of whatever, whatever you, is it that you're claiming? Right? And, uh, and, 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 and what we're going to be trying to do is that whenever the constructor, whatever the constructor we use, is, is going to initialize the state of the, of the object. Right? And ideally, we'll put the state of the object in its constraint, right? In its um, um, in its invariance, right? Uh, and and, it'll, and the logical statement will be true or false, whatever you're claiming. And then subsequent uh, methods, right? Uh, you, you need to make sure that they preserve the same logical statement that is true or false, right? And that it, they don't introduce something that is nonsense, right? That it makes no sense, right? That that certain things are supposed to be equal, but they're not. Right, and so so that, that's uh, and this will drive the rest of our designs. Uh, a couple of uh, in, uh, things that might look like invariances, but they're not. Uh, so, for instance, you might you might say that uh, a particular value is small, right? Uh, and and again, this is this smallness. The smallness typically is a very relative thing. You know, it's small compared to what, right? Uh, so this uh, so you would need to be able to tell me that context. Depending on the context, I might tell you whether it's small or not, right? So, so there's nothing that I can guarantee, right, that this will always be true, right? Well, it depends on the context. So there's no way for me to test this. So this is not a good uh, invariance, right? Um, or it never decreases. Uh, again, never is a you know never is a long, long time, right? Um, uh, especially at the end. Um, so so it's a, it's a, it's there's no way for 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 uh, for for me to validate that this is, this is going to be true ever, right? That, that, um, so we care about the instantaneous moment. At any one particular time and moment, is the current state, does it hold the invariance? Not 
is this going to happen? Is this going to be true tomorrow or later or anything? Right? At this particular instance, can I validate that this is uh, true? So we only really care about a single point. So no, that's not an invariance. Uh, value is not negative. Uh, so uh, well, it's not true, right? Because you could have negative. Uh, even numbers, right? We're, we're still looking at the e even counter example. Uh, so, so the constructor is not is not disallowing negative numbers. It's it's fine. Um, and and some of these as well that uh, we're saying it's an integer. Uh, well, I mean the language already is testing for that, right? The the the, the programming language declared this to be in, an integer, and the compiler will 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 enforce the fact that this is an integer, right? So there's not there's no real need for uh, for me to you know, validate that anyway, it's, it's, all, it's not really worth uh, listing it as an invariance since already the Java language data type uh, enforces this, uh, these constraints. Okay? Uh, so we're going to be looking at invariances as it applies to connect n. We'll go back to the uh, connect n, we'll look at the width, the height, uh, the, the, the list of lists and whatnot, and see how, that, how invariances affect uh, connect n. Right? 